So this is just one of the five turbocharged Mercedes Maybach 12 cylinder diesel engines that would propel the Aurora. The model on these engines is MD655S. Each one of them hosts 1200 horsepower, but can be modified to up to 2000 horsepower. The total engine power aboard this ship is 6800 horsepower, divided by five main propulsion engines at 1200 horsepower. Each diesel engine is coupled to an AEG 340 volt traction generator that in turn powers two massive AEG drive motors. Before this diesel electric propulsion system was considered for this vessel, it was tested out in several different locomotives running 1500 revolutions per minute at 3000 solid hours. That's quite a bit of hours and they, and they passed with flying colors. So they decided this would be the ship to do the trial run. The Aurora would be the test platform for Mercedes Maybach diesel electric propulsion. This is one of the five massive Maybach diesel generators that were built to propel this ship. It was actually a diesel electric and that's why you have these generators. So this one actually hasn't been opened up in maybe 20 years. Ever since I've got the ship, I've never opened this, this particular one up. I've opened up a couple of other ones. It's not made to open that far unless you actually dehinge the cover and I think that that's pretty easy to do for someone who is gonna get in here and work on things. There's actually plenty of room to work on just about everything in here. But I want to take a look in here today and gauge the feasibility of actually cleaning these things up in high detail, drying them out so that they may operate again and produce power. We have a little bit of rust in the bottom I think that that's maybe the condensation that had built up over the years, but nothing looks destroyed or ruined in any way. And you can see that most of this is still in pretty good shape. I would think it would need uh, a really good cleaning to be able to operate once again. All the copper coils are still in place. Everything's still here, both sides look pretty good. You can see the parts that they actually replaced over time and other than that it, it, it actually looks really good. There's two access ports. There's one on the other side. None of them have run since around 2001 but we're going to try and get this this engine actually running again and in order to do that the first thing I need to do is I need to pop some of these covers off and see what it looks like underneath here. If it's all rusted out, it just adds a lot of work to what I've got to do. But if it's in relatively decent shape, um, then you know we have a little bit less work. But I have the feeling that not everything on here is gonna be easy. I just wanna get started and my goal for the moment is just to pop this cover and see what it's gonna look like. So I brought a ratchet with me and I'm going to start taking these bolts out and we're going to see what we got underneath. That's a good sign. It's, it's clean. It smells like oil, of course, but it's no rust at all. It's very clean. Let me get a wrench. This is a, uh, okay, 13. This should do it. So there's a few in here that are a little bit different of a size. I'll pop those ones first. Okay. Now it looks to me we're gonna need You know, some of these are just different sizes. So whenever somebody serviced this, they they got the right thread size, 
but not all of these are not all the heads of these bolts are the same size. They're coming up pretty easy. When I put this thing back on, I'm going to have to rebuild a gasket for it. I have a couple of big lockers up top that are filled full of spares, and I may be able to find most of the extra parts for these engines uh, in the spares lockers. Today I have longtime friend Steve Hardcore here, and and he and we're gonna pop this engine cover off and check out and see what it looks like. It hasn't been off in probably about 25, maybe even 30 years, so I'm a little bit nervous to what we're gonna find, but we need to dig in. Steve actually has his own little steamboat, and what what year's your motor in that thing? 1908, 1909. So like, uh, what is the motor? The engine is a twin cylinder compound steam engine built yeah. by uh, um, a Canadian company. So he, he's been working on a steamboat for quite some years now and it's pretty impressive. Here's a couple pictures of it. Anyway, we're going to tear this thing off and get some opinion on it. We've already taken out all the bolts, so now is definitely the time to do a little... Oops. Stuck by the paint. No, it's coming. It's coming. It's just chipping off the paint. Ooh. Oh, wow. Look how clean that is. Wow. Look at that, still got the gasket intact. Gasket on it too. That is super clean. That looks... Someone already cleaned it up before they laid it up, didn't they? It's either been cleaned okay. before it was laid up or or it's just that clean. <laughs> they wiped, looks like they wiped the inside of it. Yeah, it's... On the inside, back around where the camshaft. It looks like a fresh rebuild engine to me. I mean, this thing is that clean. I don't see an ounce of rust in here. I don't see anything. And actually I could see some remnants of the oil and it still kind of looks like honey. Yeah, I didn't expect to find it this clean. This is this is kind of a, this is a happy moment because it gives this engine a lot more hope than it would have if I would have found a bunch of rust in here. Yeah, the one thing that I can see is we have uh, we have one bolt here that broke off that we're gonna have to drill out, oh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, the rest of the bolts didn't have any rust on them at all. This one looks like it rusted and broke in half, so it's kind of strange how that works. I don't think any of this is gonna be a super easy task, but we're definitely on a mission to get this thing running. It's really ex exceptionally clean, like someone actually wiped off all the parts in here before they laid this thing up. Uh, there's no excess oil dripped anywhere, and um, it's just really super clean. The, the uh, valve heads uh, are have been wiped off. Um, 
boy, it would be nice to talk to the guy that uh, that laid this thing up, however many years it's been, because somebody really made an effort. They must have had to take this apart to clean it out. I think it's going to survive. Oh, yeah. But the rest of it looks like this on the inside of it, the crank. Crank uh, bearings are that clean that they'll... It's in pretty darn good shape. It should be fairly easy to turn over by, maybe not by hand, but you don't want to turn it over, you know, without uh, putting any fuel or anything on it. Just make sure everything is all free, all the valves are, are working. And I know nothing at all about these engines, so uh, if any of your viewers know anything about it, they could probably really fill your ear on. See, look way down inside here, and the, the lifters are all bright and shiny. And some of your mechanics watching, it would be, <laughs> be interesting to hear your comments on what it takes to clean something like that up. They painted everything on the outside of this, and you can see they were copper lines, fuel lines, and because they painted them, there's no corrosion or anything, so that's going to be a big help in taking it apart. You know, you see some of the paint is is starting to flake off a little bit and some of the steel nuts might have a little bit of rust on them but how many years has it been chris since this since this thing ran i would say an easy 25 or 30 well 25 years since it's ran okay so whatever work they've done on it has been done since that at least 25 years ago so um somebody made a real effort to to uh, preserve this thing and they even they even made the uh, builders, kept the builders clean. They didn't paint anything on that. Let's see if we can get the specs on it. If you can, if you can read that. The main thing I, I would presume would be to, would guess would be to make sure all your fuel lines are clean and clear. And then um, um, make sure that your, your, all your filters are clean and, and, and uh, and you've got some way to pressurize oil through the through all the ports and the crankshaft and everything. And I don't know if that would take complete disassembly of the engine, um, or if it just um, places where you could try it. I know some guys have taken old V8s and sort of sit in a field for 40 years and put a battery in it and start them, but <laughs> you probably don't want to do that with an engine this size. So. I don't know. So, you guys, you're the ones. Tell Chris how to do it. What do you think? If it was your engine, what would you do with it? How would you get it going? So, this is a portable air conditioner from Enjoy Cool. And I met these guys while I was in CES in Las Vegas. The same, uh, they were just a few booths down from the Ace New Group that does the Neutron 1200 that I reviewed a couple videos ago. First thing, I walked by these guys. These guys had one of these set up and I felt a cool breeze blow on me while I was walking by their booth. So I had to stop and see what that was. And I, I noticed this little guy and I've seen the portable air conditioners before, but I've never really had a chance to play with one. After talking to them for a little while, they decided to send me one to, uh, to check out and do a little bit of a review on. So this is it. The thing weighs 14 pounds, it comes with a remote. It's an actual air conditioner. It has a compressor built in, actually a Panasonic compressor built in. The thing only weighs 14 pounds. And being off grid, we have a bunch of cabins here that don't have air conditioning. In the summertime, the Aurora turns into a big oven. This thing, I'm actually looking forward to using this summer. Right now, it's kind of a cold day, so it's kind of a weird time to actually review this thing. But it's been running on high, which is about 270 watts for about five hours now. And this Ace New Power Station has gone from 100% down to about 54%. So that's really good. If you're out camping or you're a truck driver, you want to cool off your pets, or you're, you know, you have a boat or a cruise ship that you want to cool some cabins on for your volunteers during the summertime, then this is the animal right here. This is definitely one of the coolest things that I've seen, and I'm glad that these guys sent it over because I'm going to get a ton of use out of it. The specs on this thing is that it's 2380 BTU 
and it runs on 24 volts, but it's very, very efficient. I'll give you the basic rundown. This tube is where the cold air comes out and it comes out cold. I'll tell you what, this is, this is like ice cooler cold coming out of here and it does that even when it's warm outside. It doesn't matter, it comes out ice cold. So they give you this little attachment with it with a couple of hoses and if you look on the back, this thing connects to here and you can hook a couple of hoses. One of them sucks from the outside to cool the compressor and it blows the hot air out the other side. So you definitely wanna have the hot air end uh, sticking away from you or outside. If you wanna know more about the Enjoy Cool portable air conditioner, or maybe you wanna get one of your own, check out the link in the description below and don't miss out, these things are very cool. So this is the control panel for this engine and I'm gonna go ahead and pop this cover off because we've never done that. We're gonna see what we have. I mean, first thing I could see is this thing is, uh, is loose. So they probably replaced it with something. I don't know why they would have put this in there, but it's just sitting there. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop this sucker off and let's see what we have. Ooh, that one's cross-threaded about right there. Oh, there we go. It looks to be in okay condition. The corrosion doesn't look like it's taken things over too much, but at the same time, I think I would want to redo all these gauges, look, see if I can't find these things uh, different places. This one's just flat out broken. This one's loose and pretty rusty. It may still work, but I'm thinking that I want to replace them all if we're going to fire this engine up and make it to where we can start it at a moment's notice. That would be a good thing to do to have all of these gauges working properly and probably uh, finding more of these light bulbs. My guess is these things aren't going to be that easy to find. And a lot of this wiring, if you go messing around with it, the shielding is going to kind of fall off because it's, you know, a lot of this stuff is probably dates back to the date of the engine. So, yeah, so these, the, you don't want to mess around too much with these things unless you intend on replacing them. So I'm going to go through this whole thing, document it, put wire markers on every piece of wire that's in this thing and get ready to replace all these wires with comparable new wire so that we don't have any problem with cracking. And we can actually run them nicely back around the box and make this thing look great. But the idea I think that I have now is to pull this thing off, take it to a shop, have the box itself sandblasted, repaint the box back to the nice, beautiful gold color that it used to be inside, uh, put it all back together, put as many new wires into this thing as we can possibly put into it. Uh, make sure all of these starter buttons, all this stuff works. Uh, find new fuses. I think, I think there's probably quite a few spares on board for the fuses. This is going to be a really fun project. It just goes to show you that each little piece on this ship takes so long to do. You can't finish one project in one episode. It's very difficult to do that. We've tried that with the uh, ship's horn doesn't work but we're gonna bite it off a piece at a time until we get this thing started all right so i'm gonna go ahead and check the oil on this engine because uh oh there's no oil in it i don't think that there should be any oil it's empty it smells good though yeah she's empty no oil in it all right that's a good sign Sometimes we're gonna go ahead and pull the cover off so we look down inside and see if there's any gunk down there because uh, You know before you put oil in it, you want to make sure it's cleaned up right. We'll give me some wrenches Yeah. 
clean. Bearings look good. I said, I'm going to turn on this camera Chris has, and uh, we're going to poke it down to the bottom and see how much crud's in the bottom of the can. And we'll see if it needs to come off and uh, get it cleaned up. So here we go. The bearings look good. There's no sludge in the bottom, so that's a good thing. So that means we don't have to take the pan off. Um, maybe later we'll take the rest of these covers off and look at both ends too. This is one of the two AEG drive propulsion motors that the Mercedes Maybach diesel generator systems run. I couldn't even imagine what these things weigh. The housing. You got to think, these bolts go directly into the steel, so it's got to be at least four inches thick, the walls on this motor. And that's times two, and they're probably about 15 feet long. So they're monsters, but they are in pretty good shape. Well, I took a look inside each one of them, and this one, this one is probably the best of the two. It's uh, a little bit dirty. I do see some cobwebs, things like that. But all in all, and there is a blanket up top here. So they were trying to keep this thing either dry or they were trying to warm it up. Uh, but if you take a look and you go back, there's a lot to see. So much stuff. And then we go down. I could see that the heaters below have some condensation that created rust, so I'm imagining that those heaters probably aren't going to operate anymore, but it sure would be nice to get these lights working. There's like several light bulbs in here that make it so that you can see what's going on, and I would imagine that the hatches in the back have pretty much the same thing. When this thing is cleaned, I would imagine that all of this looks like fresh copper and these things, oh, look at this. See, uh, there's a fault right there, right up. Well, maybe not. Nope, it's connected. Before running these things, definitely would want to actually clean these things, rotate it, heat this thing up, uh, do a Mager test on it to make sure that it would actually operate and lube everything there, there's a ton of work to do to these things even more so than the diesel engines another project another day this waukesha six cylinder massive diesel generator is the power plant that was used to power up all of the cabins the lounge pretty much everything that was on board and they put in an overkill generator this thing has a 300 kW stator and could run more than enough power to operate this whole ship if uh, everything was running at the same time. This is probably enough to operate two ships like this simultaneously. It was an overkill for somebody to install this in here. It's actually a really sad story because they removed a very rare Mercedes diesel generator to put this thing in. Not that I have anything against Waukesha, but I'd much rather have the Mercedes diesel generator in place than this thing.